Okay, this is a reaction video on popular advice that you swear by. This is a TikTok video on popular advice that you swear by. Stitch this with your most unpopular piece of advice that you swear by. I'll start. Mine is that you don't have to do a job that you are passionate about. You don't have to follow your passion. I think that that's bullshit. It's great if you want to, but also it is just as valid to get a job that pays really fucking well so that you have enough free time and money to actually do what you're passionate about. Like, I tried to be a freelance writer. I was working my ass off, and I still didn't break like $30,000 a year. But I make more now working part-time than I ever did as a freelance writer. And I get to write what I want, when I want, and I'm happier, and I have more money to do other things. Like, that's a win most yeah that's a win but uh, who says you can't do both maybe you, what you're just passionate i mean if you're talking about money and money is the most important thing then maybe you can't follow your passion depends on what your what, what your i mean if your passion is banking or uh uh you know doing doing things you know that, that pay well then you know maybe you can do both unpopular piece of advice that you swear by if it's not a fuck yes it's a fuck no and you may be asking, what situation does this apply for? All of them. Let's start with a small example. You're clothes shopping, you find a top. You're like, should I get this? If you're like, yeah, I'd wear this on a Tuesday when it's raining and as long as I don't feel like my arms look fat that day, don't get the top. If you're not gonna feel like a goddess every time you put on that top, there's no need spending money to bring that energy into your life. A bigger example. Boy, this girl's thinking a hell of a lot more than I ever would about anything like that example should I date this person if this person makes you smile and you want to see them every day and they make you feel like the best version of yourself that is a fuck yes and if it's anything well I don't know if I need to add the f-bomb there but I, I, I think that that's true for anybody anything less than that is a fuck no baby yeah I, I, I stitch yeah. this with your most unpopular piece of advice that you swear by stay with them you know that super toxic relationship that you're in and you constantly try to leave and it like the relationship just won't allow you. You keep getting sucked back in and like everything in you wants to leave, but you just never do. Stay. Stop fighting it and stay. Because like 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 you're addicted to drugs, you're addicted to them. And until you hit rock bottom, you're never gonna stop going back. Until you I guess what she's saying is that if you're in a toxic relationship and you keep going back to said toxic relationship, just don't get out. Don't quit out and go back. Don't get out and go back. Just stay there and until you hit rock bottom. I don't know if that's the best advice I would give somebody in that scenario, but I suppose, I'm assuming you're not getting the crap kicked out of you every five seconds. Uh, they aren't uh, physical on you, then I guess you probably could still do that. That's some advice. I don't know if it's the best advice or the most sound advice, but. You finally realize why you can't go back. You're going to keep going back. So keep going back. Go back, stick through it, and guess what? When you are full, you will get up. Like that's a quote I've seen and is what I live by. The day you've had enough and you realized you are full, you will get up and you will walk away. And that will be the day you never go back. So go back. This is really detrimental and it could really fuck you up in the end. So like I said, it, it, it it's a terrible piece of advice, but it works. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible piece of advice. Stitch this with your most unpopular piece of advice that you swear by. do it you know that idea that you had that you definitely shouldn't do that person that you really shouldn't hang out with do it because how else are you going to be the main character Stitch okay i'm not going to say anything on that because i have no idea what the hell she was talking about this with your most unpopular piece of advice that you swear by the hardest lesson you ever learn in your 20s is that love is not enough. Love does not conquer all. That was not the hardest lesson I learned when I was in my 20s, okay, is that love is not enough. Okay, there's, I, I learned a whole bunch of lessons in my 20s. But one of the things I did not learn is that love was not enough, or that wasn't the most important lesson I learned, I'll put it that way. So much of our childhood is spent telling us that if the love is strong enough, if you work hard enough, you can make it work no matter what. That's just not true. You can love someone and they can be completely wrong for you. And truly, I think the worst heartbreak that we go through is when we figure out that someone was not our life love, but our life lesson. And you can love them like crazy, but that doesn't mean it's going to make it work. Uh, I think that the, the thing about love, loving someone, is uh, 
uh, it has to be back and forth. I mean, if, if, if I'm in love with you and you're not in love with me, it's never going to work. Uh, I think, but, but again, I, that's something I, I, I didn't have to wait to my 20s before I learned that. Stitch this with your most unpopular piece of advice that you swear by. Money's not real. What something is... Oh, money's very real, okay? You may not consider it real, but it, it, it very much is real. Worth is not tied to time and is not tied to an object. An hour of your life is not worth $15 any more than a year of your life is worth 50000 Well, I, I suppose uh, you can look at it that way if you like. Maybe you have a different uh, set of circumstances that I'm unaware of. But uh, no, money is very real. And uh, money is very important. If you ask 10 people what a house is worth, you're going to get 20 answers. Because, look, if you're talking about what something is worth, that's one thing, okay? I can pull out a copy of the first appearance of, of Superman in a comic book, and some collector would give me millions of dollars for it, and you, who may not like comic books, wouldn't give me two cents for it, or you might even you know, peruse it and then toss it back to me. But, uh, you know, when you're talking about money is very real. But if you're talking about worth, what something is worth, okay, yeah, that's subjective. But, uh, yeah. The U.S. housing crash, when houses went from 400000 to to 100000 where did the 300000 go? It vanished like it never existed because it never did. Yeah, no kidding, okay? But you're talking about worth. Okay, look, it's like, here's, it's like whenever the stock market goes down, like if you, if you have, you know, you know, you know $50,000 worth of stock and the stock – went down, now it's $25,000. You say, well, you lost $25,000. No, you didn't, okay? All it did was just, it just devalued, and it might go back up. That's why you don't touch the stuff, okay? Or you sell when it's high and you buy when it, come on. And in the last 10 years, when house prices went from 100 to 400, where did the extra 300 come from? It wasn't like someone came by and gave it to the homeowner. It appeared out of nowhere. School won't tell you this, but the value of something in terms of money is tied to your feelings. Society is happy, the price goes up. When society is sad, the price goes down. This is why Warren Buffett says you need to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Take <laughs> this is so funny because, like I said, this is stuff that, that everybody should know already. If, if you don't know this, this is just complete horse hockey. I mean, good God, no kidding. Okay, come on. Take care. Ditch this with your most unpopular piece of advice that you swear by. Do it. Do it right now. I think about all the times that I stood over a casket and remembered all the plans that we had, but we never made the time to actually do it. Something else was always more important. Or people who think they have to wait endless amounts of time to move in together or to get married. It's, it's like... They're living up to other people's expectations. You know, when people want to move to a different city, it's like, well, I have to have everything planned out perfectly. And if there's one thing I've learned after five decades on this planet is that nothing can be planned. You, you can do a little bit. You can have a little nest egg, but you can't predict. People die. Things happen. Jobs go south. Money gets spent. If you live in Ohio and always wanted to live in New York City... Get the fuck to New York City. If you're in love with somebody and want to be with them forever, go be with them forever. Do what you want to do. Well, I don't know if that's unpopular advice. <clears throat> I do live in Ohio, and I'm not going to move to New York City, okay? And yes, nothing is guaranteed, okay? This year, my cousin, who was going to turn 50, passed away a month before, before she turned 50. And her father also passed away a couple months later. Nothing is guaranteed. We got that. He's saying just do it. If you want to move to Ohio, you want to go to New York City. Look, you can plan things, okay? Everybody can plan things. There's nothing wrong with planning things, okay? But I don't, there's something to also be said for over planning things. But look, if I'm getting ready to move to New York City, I'm in Ohio, I want to go to New York City, I'm going to plan, okay? I'm, going to, I'm not going to over plan, but I'm going to say, I'm going to choose a place to live. I'm going to make sure it's affordable. I'll make sure I have a job, make sure I have everything, make sure I can afford things out there. There's nothing wrong with planning. I'm not sure if up and 
pack my stuff and move to New York City and just say, oh, who gives up to find a place? It, it doesn't work. There's nothing wrong with planning. But there's also nothing wrong with just doing either. But I, I, I would plan before I do. Okay, that's, that's you know, if, if maybe that works for him, but it certainly doesn't work for me. Stitch this with your most unpopular piece of advice that you swear by. If someone comes at you unprovoked, do not match their energy. If their energy's here, go here. End it. Finish them. One and done. That's all you have to do. What if they're, well, are they confrontational? Is that what you're talking about? Because if I'm coming in debt to you and I'm, you know, you know, all uh, high below you, is that what you're saying? I, I don't understand what you're saying. And it's like, two wrongs don't make a right. It makes me feel better. Well, as it makes you feel better, then I guess it's good. But I, I, I really, if somebody comes at you and don't match their level, okay. But why are they coming at you? Are you talking about that they're going to go f get physical or, or verbal or get into an argument with you? Uh why are they why would somebody walk up and do that i mean how many how many times has that ever i mean i'm i'm sure it's happened before but i'm trying to think how many times that's ever happened it's never happened to me before that i can think of that somebody just walked up to me that i don't know of that's just all of a sudden got verbal on me because i wasn't bothering you why the fuck did you come at me so like you know i, I i'm kind of curious how many people have experienced that if you're just minding your own business and somebody just comes at you Someone's bullying you, calls you a fat ass in school. Random stuff. Oh, Remind them bully. the reason they're adopted is because their first set of parents didn't like them. And if they keep being a little shit, maybe their current set of parents will give them up too. So they're walking on thin ice. I used to talk about bullying, but, uh, okay. But, <laughs> and she's giving some put downs of what you should tell them if they're adopted. And maybe the first person like me, their like, current parents will give them up. That's... That's that's very really classy, but um, okay. You know, if, if somebody's bullying you, there are other ways to deal with it than what she's selling right there. But okay, yeah, look, everybody has their own advice. This is unpopular advice you swear by. That's her advice. Okay. End it. Bring a gun to a knife fight. Old woman in the store starts talking. I believe she's talking metaphorically, not actually. If somebody pulls a gun, a knife at you, make sure you. Well, maybe she is talking about having a gun. I don't know. Mad shit for no reason. Remind her that she should have learned in the critique. I kind of, well, I also get, you know, not that I'm, you know, I think she's probably talked about stuff that's happened to her. Okay. I think I, it's safe to say she's talking about things that have happened to her, not necessarily everybody else. And she's hope, period. And I hope she hasn't brought a, a gun to a knife fight or a, a knife to a gun fight or that she's actually bought a gun. When she went to kindergarten, that she should have learned not to talk to strangers. She didn't because she's stupid. Remind them that they're stupid. <laughs> In kindergarten, you tell a five-year-old, uh, you're stupid. That's that's really going to go over well. End it. End it. Yeah, I don't know about any of this stuff. I mean, like I said, this, is, this may be a little bit over my head. Maybe uh, I've lived too long and I don't understand what the young, young people, you know, the stuff that uh, you should learn in your 20s that I learned well before my 20s. Uh, uh, money isn't real. Uh, when it, it's very much real. Uh, and, well, okay. Unpopular advice that you swear by. That's what this is. And these are people that swear by their unpopular advice. And I'm just reacting to it. I'm not perfect. I'm not going to claim I'm perfect. I'm just reacting. But it is what it is. Uh, please click like, share, and subscribe, and have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching.